Welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii BizEd Spotlight. My name is Alice B. Hagen. Today's show is um, I'm going to be interviewing um, an alumnus of ours at the Shidler College of Business. Her name is Erin Kano Uyehara. She graduated recently from our part-time MBA program in 2013. She was a former elementary school teacher, was a very accomplished dancer, and now she is in the next career as a chocolatier. Welcome, Erin. Thank you very much. Well, before we begin the show, um, let me ask the producer to show us a video that will give the viewers a snapshot of what you have to deal with every day. Okay, producer, could you show the footage, please? Chocolea is a gourmet chocolate company and we specialize in making fresh artisan dark chocolate truffles and treats. Uh, we make everything here in Hawaii using local ingredients and only the highest quality ingredients. to work with chocolate every day. Yeah. I don't know how you do that, but um, happy World Chocolate Day, by the way. Thank you. So, Same to you. <laughs> who came up with that idea? I don't even know. Oh, it's okay. just another reason to celebrate eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you tell people that you're a chocolatier, what mm -hmm. do people say? What do people say to you? Um, really? How did that happen? Uh -huh. I know it's fun. It always just leads to a conversation, get to meet people and get to know them more. <laughs> okay. So how did that happen? <laughs> Uh, how that happened mm -hmm. is actually a really remarkable story. Mm -hmm. uh, the company was actually founded by my uncle, Collins Kawai, and his wife, Joan Kawai. Mm -hmm. And um, they, it, how I got involved with my husband, Chris, was really a story. And in short, basically, I met him because I'm a diehard chocolate lover mm -hmm. and was looking for him and his samples. <laughs> oh, so you knew about this company before you um, met him? No, I was at an expo oh, and okay. a friend had told me, you got to try this guy's chocolates. And so she knew that I was just, I love chocolate. Mm -hmm. So I went looking for him, mm -hmm. kind of kept talking story with him and we realized we were related and he was my uncle. And um, this was long lost family that we had found through chocolate. and. Um, yeah, from there it just kind of took off. We just got together, we worked together and learning about it and just kind of catching up family time together that was lost and and now here we are doing it with them. I can't even imagine because of chocolate it helped reunite your family it did. in a certain way. So, okay, go back to the beginning of how your uncle started this company. Um, is he a professional chocolate here? No, he's not. Oh. He actually has a full-time job at the University of Hawaii, oh. um, but he was actually looking for a dessert to take to a dinner, saw a recipe in a magazine on how to make a truffle, mm -hmm. and he gave it a try. People enjoyed it, and so he went through 12, 14 years of just trial and error, a uh, school of hard knocks, teaching himself uh, how to make chocolates. And from there, he thought, maybe I should make this a business. And mm -hmm. that's where Chocolea came in. Oh, OK. Yeah. Now, Chocolea, tell us what that means. Chocolea mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. chocolate pleasures. Yeah, so it's a blend, a fusion of Hawaiian and European. OK, so how did you, is that your uncle's, uh, that must, is that your uncle's idea? Or yes, no, oh. that was his idea. So how, how did he come up with that fusion name then? You know, he actually took two years to come up with the name by itself. And um, for that, he talked to a lot of Hawaiian language experts. He uh, worked with people in the university and uh, also some other chocolatiers in, in the island and just kind of brainstormed together to come up with that chocolate. And um, the logo was also created by his friend, Karen Lobel Free, who's an artist. Oh, so yeah, okay. it was just the collaboration. Um, you brought up the logo. Maybe I can ask uh, our producer to show the business card so we can show the audience uh, what the logo looks like. Okay. And I know you explained it on your website, but mm -hmm. if you don't mind sharing that with, sure. um, with our audience. Producer, could you? Yeah. So that's the logo. Mm -hmm. And what's the significance of the symbol or the logo? 
So the, our logo is mm -hmm. uh, Kua'e Ula, carrying a cacao branch. Mm -hmm. So it's symbolic of the dove carrying the olive branch. And it's to represent um, our actually our mission statement, which is bringing peace to our world one chocolate at a time. And so it's kind of we, when my uncle or Colin started the company, mm -hmm. he actually did it as a charitable, um, uh, with a purpose to give away actually 50% of all his profit to various organizations, locally, nationally, internationally. So he always knew that he wanted to use chocolates to bring peace and love to other people around the world, which just, you know, it lined up with my husband and my values as mm -hmm. well. So it just worked out really well where we all share the same mission. That's incredible. I went to your website and I guess I, I saw that sentence from your website uh, as part <laughs> of our title for our program today. Um, so you said fifty percent of the profit goes yeah. to charitable organizations. That's so, how it started. Yeah. Uh, Today we still give a percentage of mm -hmm. every um, every sale mm -hmm. to charities. So who are some of the beneficiaries then? Oh, there's so many. Mm -hmm. um, it just ranges because we are we have different passions mm -hmm. from um, churches and missions overseas, mm -hmm. Doctors Without Borders, uh, medical, the Kapilani Hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hawaii Arts Alliance, education, uh, mm -hmm. just varies, yeah. <laughs> so do you have to have a discussion with your uncle and your husband to decide, okay, who are the charitable organizations that you want to give to? We do, mm -hmm. and sometimes we also let our customers pick, like mm -hmm. when a, a bride uh, books a wedding, mm -hmm. and we will ask her, oh, you know, who's the organization that you would like us to donate to? Sometimes they just say up to you, but mm -hmm. sometimes they have a heart too to give to a certain organization. So I know that you started the company, or your uncle started the company mm -hmm. back in 2010, and yeah. I've seen a lot of um, stories written up about your company already. So has any of the um, charitable organizations approached you? Uh, several have mm -hmm. approached us, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but we're just open to just doing what we're doing, and we're always thinking about giving back regardless of who it is. Just That's incredible. It's so good to know that uh, you're a homegrown gourmet chocolate company, <laughs> and you're doing so much. <laughs> and of course, you're also an, uh, a graduate of our, of our college. Yes. Now, um, in my brief introduction of you, I mentioned that you were an elementary school teacher, mm -hmm. and then you were a very accomplished dancer, <laughs> and now you're a chocolatier. So how does your or perhaps your career as a dancer how, how has that or your previous careers help you with your um, with your entrepreneurial venture right now <laughs> um, you know everything I think helps mm -hmm. no matter what experience mm -hmm. it was definitely uh, dancing gave me the confidence because it's something that I really love to do and really mm -hmm. passionate about mm -hmm. and in order to succeed I had to work really really hard um, also had to work with other people and focus on um, what the kids wanted, what was good for the, the, my dancers, what was good for their families. And I think that's what kind of drove the success was focusing on them. And that just gave me the confidence that I can do something I love. It's just a lot of work and you have to think about why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. So I think that really helped me. And, and teaching, yeah, I just learned so many things in teaching. I think everything, you just have to take something away from it. So as a chocolatier, what are you, who are you doing this for then? I'm doing it for everybody and anybody who loves chocolate or doesn't love chocolate. <laughs> if you really? don't love it, I want to know why and give you chocolate and make sure you're not, you're, your mind is made up. That is amazing. <laughs> You've met people who said they don't like chocolate. Uh, rarely, okay. rarely, but I, I've met a few people who don't like dark chocolate. Oh, yeah, okay. so then when we'd like to give it to them and see if we can change their mind. I, I just cannot imagine because as soon as you say you're chocolate here, I, I would imagine people have this big smile and say, really? <laughs> Most people do. Right? But yeah. even my husband never ate chocolate until until he had this chocolate. And now he, he loves it, he makes it, but he was one of those people who wouldn't, that wouldn't be his choice dessert. So. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I don't understand, but... <laughs> your business has changed a lot of things, right, personally okay. and... Um, but tell us about your husband, uh, because I know before our interview, you said that he, he's a big part of the business. Yes. So what role does he play? Um, actually, it was him that was really interested in learning how to make chocolate. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a lot of common interests together. So when he said something that might be something we could do together, we, we started to do it together. And we found that it really brought us closer. Mm -hmm. But um, he really enjoys it because he loves to just get his hands going and working and making a craft, doing an artisan work. And 
um, I think people enjoy it. So he actually does a lot of the production. He makes a lot of the chocolates that you see in, in the stores and mm -hmm. the hotels and wherever we go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you said that he didn't like chocolate beforehand. He wasn't uh, as serious of a chocolate lover. I wouldn't say he didn't like it, but it wasn't like he loved it before. But he was interested in the production process. Yes, he was. <laughs> so he, he just, I mean, he likes learning. He worked hard and he okay. picked up a lot from training with my, um, with Colin. Well, um, working hard is another thing that you brought up earlier on, no matter what career you are in, mm -hmm. whether it be a school teacher or a dancer. Um, of course, when we all see the, the beautiful creations that you bring, um, it seems so glamorous, but I'm sure there's a lot of hard work behind it. Tell us about what you do. Um, um, what, what is your regular work day like? Oh, my regular work, mm -hmm. there is no regular work day. <laughs> uh, I think because we're a small family company, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a, a core group of us that are doing this. It's really, we all have to wear different hats. So mm -hmm. one day I'm, I'm up early, I'm a driver in my car with the air conditioning blowing and driving to Waikiki and delivering chocolates. Mm -hmm. um, the next minute I'm the, you know, sweeping the floors, washing the dishes, I'm making chocolate, I'm billing, invoicing, uh, answering the phone, <laughs> talking to customers. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it's, it's never the same every day. But that's kind of what makes it really exciting, too. Well, um, even though it's exciting, are there certain part of your job which you think, oh, well, I really wish there was somebody else who could do that? <laughs> um, you know, I wish there was somebody that could keep it cool in Hawaii all the time. <laughs> I think that's the really frustrating part is we work in a really cool environment. Mm -hmm. We store our chocolates mm -hmm. in a cool place. Mm -hmm. and, and then when it leaves our hands, we don't know <laughs> where it's going in this hot weather if people are going shopping for a few hours or to the beach mm -hmm. and they want to take the chocolates and mm -hmm. forget in the car I'm not sure I think that's a that's a challenge is always what you know just trying to take care of our babies and make sure it's okay <laughs> that is interesting now I realize why you always have that piece of note in your box of chocolates saying put it in a cool place yeah. so is that what happens it just well, it's mm. chocolate. It melts, yeah. Mm. So, but is it um, because you don't put preservatives in your chocolate? Is that also a reason why it melts quicker? Well, we don't add any preservatives. Oh, okay. We don't put wax, and it's pure chocolate. So mm. you're eating just chocolate, nothing else. And so that's why it's, you know, it's 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 a challenge. You, my mm -hmm. uh, my uncle Colin said mm -hmm. from the very beginning of my training, he said you're gonna have to learn how to make friends with chocolate. That's just it. It's they have a mind of their own. It's difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to do it you're going to have to make friends with it. That's the only way. And so <laughs> this is a great place to stop, friends, make friends with chocolate. I want to talk to you a little bit more about that after the break. Okay. And also perhaps um, since you graduated from the college, mm -hmm. I want to find out how, or, yeah, how, how you've been able to apply some of the things you learned from your MBA program to the business. Sure. All right. Okay. We'll take a short break. My guest here is Erin Kano Uehara. She is the co-owner of Chocolea here in Honolulu, Hawaii. We'll be right back. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to the environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Ar on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. Okay. Not tight. Okay. We do see Oh, that's good. That's fine. Welcome back. My name is Alice Lee Hagen, and you are watching ThinkTech Hawaii Biz at Spotlight. If you are just joining us, my guest is Erin. <laughs> sorry, Erin Kano Uehara. She's the co-owner of Shakalea here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Before the break, we were talking about her amazing story of how she became a chocolatier from an accomplished dancer who has a business in dancing. So Erin, um, you were talking about making friends with chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, from dancing to becoming a chocolatier, that's a huge jump. So <laughs> tell us about your training process. To become a chocolatier? Mm. 
Um, you know, I just had the best teacher. My <laughs> Collins was uh, a really great teacher, but um, you know, we just we it was really started off as family catch up time. So it was you know something we wanted to do was spend time together, and he he just taught us generously everything he knew took us under his wing, kind of wanted to see this business actually really thrive um, with, with the next generation so that there would be chocolates in Hawaii. And from there, I mean, I, I studied, I did an online uh, program too as well. And then um, through the MBA program, I also learned about business. Mm -hmm. And so kind of just used all of that plus experiences to just, you know, and it doesn't stop. My training continues every day. It's, it's so, never ending. So there are online programs on how to make chocolate. There are, yeah, oh, okay. and then because I couldn't go to Europe, <laughs> so I'd rather learn from my uncle who figured it all out here. So is most of the training in Europe then? A lot of it is. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I'm not really familiar with any chocolate schools here, mm -hmm. but maybe we'll have one one day in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see who's going to be the teacher, right? <laughs> oh, wow. So do you have any plans of going to Europe um, to learn more about chocolate making? Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, they have like a lot of events, a lot of boutiques that I'd love to go visit. Uh, unfortunately, can't go for a while because we're expecting, so mm -hmm. <laughs> we won't be going yet. But um, yeah, we do want to take a trip up there. I, I remember um, I, I heard that you were going to do some research going to Europe. Did, did that actually happen? Some research uh, going to Europe? When, no, um, that you, you were planning a trip to go to Europe to, uh -huh. to check out what's out there. Yeah. You did. We, no, we, that's what we were going to do oh, this year. Oh, <laughs> but okay. Change of plans. <laughs> oh, I see. So, what countries do you think you'll be visiting? Um, you know, we, I, we've never been to Europe. My husband and I haven't been there. So, we just want to go everywhere. You know, Belgium, uh, just every, I don't know, everywhere. <laughs> oh. And you have a good reason to go to. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, now, during your training process, you said that it was about a year. Um, were there challenges? What was it like? Um, yeah, you know, it was a year, but I would say it's not finished, so mm -hmm. it is still going. Mm -hmm. The challenges, a lot of it was working with chocolate itself in Hawaii and just the temperatures and just learning your environment and learning how uh, when you try a new chocolate or a new mold uh, or just the new day, it changes every day. So it's a lot of labor and mm -hmm. it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, that's what keeps it challenging and makes it that much more rewarding when we have these beautiful chocolates that we can give people and see them enjoy it. It's certainly a labor of love. Yes, it is. Um, so what happens if your chocolate is not up to par or to what you think they should be then? <laughs> We eat it. <laughs> no, we yeah, we give it away to our uh -huh. uh, family and friends who have okay. been getting those chocolates. Uh -huh. or oh, yeah. I'm sure they're still appreciated, <laughs> right? Um, now, what about the business side? I know you mentioned that um, you you've been able to apply some of the business concepts to your uh, to chocolate. Uh -huh. Tell us about that. Well, I mean, for myself, the mm -hmm. MBA program wasn't the easiest, mm -hmm. and um, in the program, I kind of learned that. I can't get everything, I don't understand everything, and I can't master everything. Um, but I learned, I found out what my strengths were, mm -hmm. and I also found uh, good teachers, good classmates, and good advisors who actually encouraged me and helped me to get through it. And mm -hmm. once I found, a lot of it is team-based, so once they, I found you know, people who had different skills from myself, mm -hmm. um, we learned how it's better that we work together because we really c couldn't do everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that was actually really valuable in itself because That's taking good. that out of the program, I couldn't master, there's no way I could do the program mm -hmm. over and over and just master everything. It's just continuous learning again mm -hmm. and finding other people who have the things that you lack is what you know, can make you stronger together. So I think that was actually a really valuable lesson for me in the program. You mentioned strengths. You found mm -hmm. out what your strengths are. Mm -hmm. So, what did you? What, what are your strengths, and how have you been able to apply it to to your business? <laughs> um, for myself within mm -hmm. the group, I found out that I was actually the one that wasn't afraid to go up and speak. I mm -hmm. uh, wasn't afraid to, um, you know, try new things and and mm -hmm. and see what other people thought, and also the marketing. Um, and I think that's what I've just been having fun with is just you know the Instagram, the Twitter, the going out and meeting people mm -hmm. and it's just amazing this island is so small that mm -hmm. so much of our business is word of mouth mm -hmm. and so something that I'm just naturally passionate about is meeting and talking with people is actually I guess you know something that you need in business right. and so it, right. yeah it's been great it's just wow yeah. um, so that's why it wasn't too difficult to ask you 
to come <laughs> and be my guest. I know you're really busy, but uh, I'm happy to be here. You have a beautiful website. Um, oh, is somebody helping you with that, or is yeah. this from you, your creative side that says, okay, this is no. where we should go? I mean, I love technology. Mm -hmm. I love it, but that's also a weakness for myself is the coding, and actually, it's been done by a University of Hawaii student. Oh. It was part of their uh, project. They, were, they needed to build a website, and mm -hmm. so Todd and his team of classmates um, approached us, and we said, yeah, you know, why not make your work meaningful and make it something that the public will see that is going to continue to be you know, used on a mm -hmm. daily basis. So it's really neat to see their work up and, oh. you know, they're the work, they're the geniuses behind it. They uh -huh. collaborated with us and uh -huh. just, we still work together. Oh, you good. know, what do we want to have up there? And they put everything together for us. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Your company has done so, so much good has come out from your company. It's <laughs> amazing. Um, now, you mentioned technology and that's not your strength. So <laughs> I guess one of the questions I have for you is, well, um, even though it's not your strength, but technology is pervasive. So mm -hmm. how do you think it has affected your business then? Um, tremendously, I mm -hmm. think, in the sense of the, the knowing about our business, the awareness. Mm -hmm. like, like I said, we don't even have that many followers on Instagram or Twitter compared to other companies. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing. We just have loyal customers. All mm -hmm. they need to do is share something once to the mass media, mm -hmm. and they reach their their network of people and it's just eventually those networks connect mm -hmm. and it's just been you know really incredible that we have such good people that help us we are posting things that we enjoy we want people to know mm -hmm. or after a long day of work and something comes out great we want to share it and say hey look what we are we are having for you next mm -hmm. um, and then you know people it's really the people behind the technology that have been taking it places that we could never imagine so uh, oh. we're thankful for technology oh, <laughs> now um, I know I'm biased, I love your chocolate, mm -hmm. but I also know that there are some other chocolatiers in mm -hmm. Hawaii. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your competitors here? Oh, I think, you know, actually mm -hmm. uh, Hawaii is just like a really, really great place because mm -hmm. we're the only state in the United States that can grow chocolate. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a small industry still. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to see it actually grow more. And we've uh, met with some of the other businesses oh. and their owners. and. And, and kind of shared our experiences. And we all struggle with the same thing. It's the supply and having enough chocolates here in Hawaii. So, you know, it would be kind of neat to, if we could be more of a, a state that people recognize as a chocolate state. <laughs> that's, a, that's interesting. So you actually get together with some of the other chocolatiers and talk about issues and... Not, not, not mm -hmm. on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but we do see each other out at events. Mm -hmm. And it's no stranger. We just, you know, mm -hmm. we can learn from each other. We mm -hmm. help each other. So. We don't really try to think of them as competitors, uh -huh. just we're all trying to do what we're trying to do and mm -hmm. you know, everybody specializes in their own thing. A lot of people are doing bean to bar. Um, what, what does that mean? Bean to bar meaning they actually grow their own chocolate cacao, uh -huh. they process it and okay. they bring it all the way to um, chocolate bars, uh -huh. which is not what we do. We actually okay. purchase the chocolate from them once they complete that process. Mm -hmm. So it's a team, you know, we, we need them and, and then we can take their chocolate to um, a different form as well. Now, you said that um, Hawaii is the only state that grows cacao. Do you know how, when we started growing cacao? I it's don't, actually. Okay. I should, and I probably read that and I okay. forgot. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it's probably brought in somehow, some time ago. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, now you're talking about your chocolate. You are not from the, the bean to bar mm -hmm. production. Um, so, where do you get your... Um, Cacao, chocolate. chocolate, yeah. Yeah, we use a blend of Hawaiian and Belgian mm -hmm. chocolate, mm -hmm. the finest Belgian chocolate. Sometimes we use French, Swiss, mm -hmm. just depends what we're making. Oh, yeah. okay. But and um, of course, when I told people that I'm interviewing you, one question was, how do you come up with all these different ideas of what to make? <laughs> and of course, there was a favorite one about the with the mochi inside oh, yeah. the chocolate. Um, where does this creativity come from? <laughs> I can't take credit for that. It's it's people we meet. It's our customers. Oh. It's anything, actually. I mean, we just did a wedding with a, a bride and a groom. The mm -hmm. groom likes fishing. Mm -hmm. And so we did for them a chocolate with wasabi and tobiko. <laughs> and it was beautiful. It was a huge hit. 
wasn't something I would have thought of, you know, but we were trying to think of um, what is the bride and groom like, uh -huh. how can we make it special, uh -huh. um, and then we have customers who will just, you know, call or text or email and say, hey, have you tried this, and I'm dying to see um, this happen, and so, you know, we, we take into consideration what people are interested in, wow. and people have great ideas. <laughs> so, the, the one was with wasabi and Tobiko. Tobiko. How did it taste? Did you know? Salty, sweet. Actually, it, it, it would be quite it was good. Okay. I, you know, people really liked it. It wasn't my favorite, but it, people really liked it. Wow, that's great. So what is your favorite um, oh. chocolate? It would have to be between Kona Coffee Truffle, because mm -hmm. um, we have a great Kona Coffee here, mm -hmm. and Peanut Butter and Jelly Truffle, mm -hmm. and the Mochi Truffle. Okay. Yeah. What about the Oreo one? I know that was a favorite oh, of yours. Yeah. Oreo, yeah. I used to eat that every morning before before breakfast with coffee, <laughs> but I switched to chocolate macadamia nuts. Oh, I know. So now that's my favorite. So is that what you brought in yeah, here? Yeah, that's this oh, right okay. over here. Um, <laughs> my favorite. Oh, can we see that here? <laughs> Let's see. Maybe you can hold it up here. So that's the chocolate macadamia nut. Mm -hmm. Chocolate macadamia nut. Okay. Dessert. Wow. That's incredible. Um, uh, you, before our interview, you talked about your internship um, mm -hmm. at Scheidler and how you did your internship with the company. Do you mm -hmm. want to share with with the viewers again? Yeah. I mean, it was just great that. Um, that that opportunity is provided mm -hmm. through Scheidler mm -hmm. because there's nothing like that hands-on experience in getting out there. Mm -hmm. And they were so generous to, you know, just kind of acknowledge my passion that this was something I really actually wanted to pursue mm -hmm. in terms of learning, but I didn't really even realize that it was going to become a career at that point. But it was just, you know, they just gave me that flexibility to, to fo follow something that I really was interested in. And, and lo and behold, that's what it turned out to be, you know. Just a lot of training, a lot of school, a lot of um, logging my hours and my reading and everything, and and um, and then now I'm a co-owner in this company, and you know, will one day just be hopefully passing this on to the next generation. Um, passing this on to the next generation. I know you've started that already. Do you want to uh, talk to us about the internship opportunity? Because I know that you are passionate about teaching, so yeah. you're also using this as an opportunity to reach out to younger people. Yes, um, we're, I just, I love teaching and mm -hmm. I just love um, kids and even adults who are eager to learn, anyone who's eager to learn, but it's, um, you know, I just wish that some of the things I had learned before were taught to me more as a younger person and, and I'm grateful for the things that I was taught at a younger age and so that's why I know I'm gonna be going out doing a career fair at a school, um, get to share this experience, uh, right now, we're also just, you know, interning a few people because we're trying to look at how can we grow our company, how can we grow this team. Um, and one day, you know, like I said, maybe we'll open a school because we, we do want to eventually have classes, maybe even have field trips, kind of just show, show the youth that there's opportunities everywhere and things that you love, but you have to study, you have to work, you have to, you know, be open to challenges and and work with different people because you can't do it by yourself. <laughs> right, right. But I also see that that's your entrepreneurial spirit, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that when we come back from okay. our short break, our last break. My guest here is Erin Kano Uyahara. She is the co-owner of Shakalea in Honolulu, Hawaii. We'll be right back. I'm Jake Fidel. That's Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And every Wednesday, we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've been doing it for some time now, and we have some fantastic guests on there, unbelievable guests who give us insight into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very disappointing <laughs> <laughs> area of, of progress. In this. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And every Wednesday, we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've been doing it for some time now, and we have some fantastic guests on there, unbelievable guests who give us insight into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very disappointing <laughs> area of, of progress in the state. So we love doing this. We love meeting them. We love talking to them. We love having their ideas out on the table. So maybe, just maybe, we can all make some sense of what's going on. Sharon, what do you 
you think? I think it's absolutely correct. We enjoy, we enjoy ourselves meeting with all these people <laughs> and hearing about the energy and the state of clean energy and hopefully we advance clean energy for the state. So it's terrific. Join us. Come okay, it's us. every Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is Energy Day every energy Wednesday. Wednesday. 4 to 5 p.m. Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on Think Tech Hawaii. Energy we'll Wednesday. see you there. Welcome back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii Gazette Spotlight. My name is Alice Lee Hagen. My guest today is a graduate from Shiva College of Business. Her name is Erin Kano Uehara. She's also a co owner of Shakalea here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, Aaron, you were talking about opportunities and of the company and eventually maybe starting up a school. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously have a lot of dreams and vision for the company. Would you care to share that with us? Yeah, I think um, our family has mm -hmm. just a bunch of uh, ideas. I know Collins is really interested in well is just hosting workshops, teaching. So, you know, I mean, there, there's so many different things that we want to do, mm -hmm. but we actually just go where the Lord leads us and because He's already guided us this far. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we're going to open our own store mm -hmm. um, at the end of this month. So that's really exciting oh, in Manoa. Congratulations. Thank you. So when is it opening? Uh, hopefully September 27th. But oh. we're all we, it's all kind of just pieces coming together. Mm -hmm. So we'll be on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, um, I know you are front and center of the company because that's that's <laughs> you're really the face of the company so where does your uncle where does Colin um, yeah, where is Colin then oh he's everywhere mm -hmm. I mean he's he's the founder mm -hmm. and he's my biggest supporter mm -hmm. and um, it may be the face but there's so many faces behind me I'm just the one that's uh, brave enough to go out <laughs> and do things like this because you mentioned <laughs> your family mm -hmm. so I imagine that it's not just Chris who's helping you no. um, I mean we got Colin, mm -hmm. Joan, Chris we have a team we have our parents family friends there's so many people that we've just been blessed that who want to help us and work with us mm -hmm. just volunteer their time and mm -hmm. you'll see us at different events with different faces it's mm -hmm just people want to be a part of it it's it's exciting to work with different people so I'm sure but um, you're also growing uh -huh. I know that from looking at your website you have a lot of um, special events that you you uh -huh. at, uh, go to to provide your chocolate um, you've been with the company for a couple of years uh -huh. tell us some of the big events that you have I, I guess hosted or oh. yeah. uh, big events uh, well, I, first thing that comes to mind as far as big mm -hmm. is the Oracle event we did with the Sheraton. Mm -hmm. um, that was at Fort De Russie. That was uh, six six thousand five hundred truffles, I believe. People from all over the world. It oh was amazing. People uh -huh. asking me what Orioles were. People who didn't speak English, but you know, we just connected through chocolate. <laughs> um, you know, we've done everything from mm -hmm. uh, weddings, corporate parties, but. And, and they're big accomplishments. Everything that we've done, just being being in the hotels, the Moana Surfrider Hotel, all of that is great accomplishments. But <laughs> I mean, for me, the accomplishment really is just that we're able to work together. That Let me interrupt you here, yeah. and maybe I can ask the producer to show some of the images that I took from your website, and okay. maybe you can help us ex or explain some of the events okay. that uh, where these pictures were taken. Producer, could you show us uh, in, uh, the first image, please? Okay, tell uh, us what this one is. Oh, this is um, with Ann Namba. Mm -hmm. So we actually did her uh, fashion shows, and um, she's been great. She, she, you know, she's just an incredible designer, mm -hmm. and uh, that was actually one of my first events. Not that one, but mm -hmm. uh, working with um, the team at Ann Namba was one of my first events. But she does a fashion show party, and then she has chocolates and people shop after oh, the fashion show okay. yeah so it's really exciting and what about this one here uh, this one was kind of actually a long time ago this was even before I was a part of the company oh, okay. but he did a lot of uh, Collins actually did a lot of events because it started as a catering company mm. and so we primarily only did these kinds of chocolate truffle bars where we cater chocolates at events oh, okay. and then only recently we moved into the wholesale and the uh, um, retail so that's because of you pounding the pavement and talking to people people and networking, right? Uh, yes, that, <laughs> and just, you know, we've been blessed. Doors have opened for us that we didn't 
you know, we didn't know and we just took a leap of faith then. You're very humble, but I'm sure it takes a lot of hard work. <laughs> uh, it's really tempting, so um, uh, producer, can I ask you to show the rest of the images just to show the audience some of the delectable creations from from Chocolea. <laughs> Where is this one here? Uh, that was at a private estate. We did a, a party oh for some um, mm -hmm. Japanese that flew in. That was a lot of fun. They just uh, really kind of um, just shouting out in Japanese a lot of fun things. <laughs> so is that why some of the um, labels are in Japanese then? Because uh, mm -hmm. the, the audience, uh, mm -hmm. the attendees are Japanese. Okay. Yeah. And this one, I presume, is a wedding. It was. It's actually our wedding. Yeah. <laughs> we had that as part of our centerpieces, and our favorites were treating our uh, guests to a chocolate bar. Do you remember how many chocolate you made for your wedding? Uh, you know, thankfully, I didn't make any for our wedding. <laughs> I got to relax. <laughs> really? Yeah. Did, did, um, did Chris make? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> we just ate it all that day. That's all we did. <laughs> now, um, you've done a lot. Uh, you've been really accomplished. I mean, whether you were a dancer and now in the chocolate business, but. Um, that involves a lot of hard work, and I'm sure you have um, tough lessons to learn. So I guess my question for you is, if you had to do it all over again, what would be two things that you would have done differently? Um, if I had to do it all over again? Mm -hmm. hmm. I mean, if I had to do it all over again, mm -hmm. I would say, for one thing, just knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. I think I would have been more open from a younger age to really absorb things that are taught to me. Just mm. I, I look at what I do today and the simplest thing from measuring, measuring a box. If I measure the box is wrong and I have this company in Hawaii printing and all in the wrong size, you know, I'm in trouble <laughs> if my chocolates don't fit in there. It's mm -hmm. just the simplest things I learned from school or from parents or from uh, the community just experiences. I, if I had really taken all those things to heart, knowing how much that's going to help me and affect me, and no matter what I job, what kind of job I had later, whether mm -hmm. it's chocolate or dance or teaching, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I would have really honed in on that a lot more to really learn to learn mm -hmm. and not learn to just go through the motions or because someone said to. Um, but then that's coming from experience because you've gone through that and right. this is in hindsight. But then um, I guess you mentioned earlier on that you'll be going into a career fair to talk to younger kids. Right. So how do you get the message across to them then? Uh, the same message? Mm. Ah, you know, it is a challenge. I think teachers have a challenging job. Mm. I, I, I hope that I can use chocolate as a lure for them <laughs> to kind of see that you know, even something that could look glamorous and mm -hmm. fun and is, is the same. You have to go through the same process as everybody else. You have the same challenges of working with people, working with rules, procedures, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And, and, um, and I, I don't know, that, that's going to be a challenge for me, but I'm, I'm up for it. I just hope that they're open to see that the things that they learn every day are really going to help them to accomplish the things that they want to do. Yeah. Um, now, advice? for people who are coming into the MBA program, uh -huh. um, what would you give them? Especially <laughs> now that you are an entrepreneur, um, you are in a good trajectory uh, for, your, for your career. So what advice would you have for the MBA students? Yeah, what advice would mm. I have? Mm, I mean, everyone's going to tell you the same thing, mm. you know, work hard and mm -hmm. study hard. But mm -hmm. I, I think I learned a lot about humility. Mm. You know, just because you have, you're going and you're going to get your MBA and you got into the program, it's a huge accomplishment. But at the same time, it's you really have to be humble because I learned really quickly that I really didn't know what I was doing and a lot of things, even though I think I might know what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> and just having that openness, uh -huh. I kinda, it allows you to grow more because once you you accept the fact that you can't, you you can't figure everything out by yourself and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you learn more so wow so um, now you brought in some of the new packages and mm -hmm. I guess you've mentioned already uh, some of the things that you would you're thinking of doing in terms of growing your company um, mm -hmm. 
for next year. Um, do you want to share with us the packaging, what, yeah. what you have in, what you have planned in mind? Yeah. Well, for I mean, this is great. We worked with uh, Stacy Leong Designs, and we mm -hmm. worked with um, Edward Enterprises. So they're both local companies in Hawaii, and uh, just collaborated on the vision that we wanted to express through our chocolate. There's mm -hmm. a little, little hidden jewels inside of the packaging as well when you open it up. Um, but something you were going to launch, fun colors and things that we heard also from our customers as mm. feedback. And um, we're going to have truffles, macadamia nut clusters, dried fruits, uh, chocolate covered Oreos, basically anything you can put in chocolate. Um, we'll see. It's, it's a box with endless possibilities of what we put inside. Wow. And um, now uh, Colin, well, I guess your uncle Colin, he, he is, well, you say he's the other face. So. Um, does he have any suggestions on where you should take the company? Uh, he's, you know, he's given me two really great, uh, two really, really good points. Mm -hmm. One was always that he just supported follow your dream, follow your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, if you want to do it, if you think you can do it, you've just been behind me uh, 100%. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And, and the second thing that he's really good at, him and my husband are very grounded in the sense that they're really good at making sure that I grow slowly mm -hmm. and I grow steadily because it's it's exciting, but you have to, we have to remember to grow within our means mm -hmm. and and do what we can when we can and you know accept that we can't do it all yet, but slowly we'll do more and more. So something that you think will happen, growing within your means. Tell us two things that you think will happen in the near future. Uh, well, definitely the boutique is one mm -hmm. that that came to us at a, it, with just this amazing timing and mm -hmm. a sense of a new uh, crowd kind of following us and wanting to experience the chocolate because before it was only available at catered events. So uh -huh. If you missed the event, you missed the chocolate. Um, so I think that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is we're really just looking at building a solid team. We're a great small family, but you know we want to extend our family, not just to blood relatives, but we really want to mm -hmm. just kind of extend it to people who are passionate, have the same values as us. and want to see the same things happen with the company as well. So, and then, of course, you're going to train more people um, to, to make more chocolate mm -hmm. and find more different ideas to develop different tastes, uh, different yep. types of chocolate. Mm -hmm. that's, that's incredible. <laughs> thank you so much, Erin. It's been wonderful to talk to you. Oh, no, thank you for having us. We're, we're honored to be here, so thank you. Well, good luck with your, uh, the store opening, which is in about three weeks' time. Okay. <laughs> so maybe there will be a time that we can catch up um, sometime next year yeah, or so. Yeah, that would be great. That I would love be that. Great. <laughs> My guest here is Erin Kano Uyahara. She is the co-owner of um, Cho uh, Chocolea here in Honolulu, Hawaii, and her new store in Manoa mm -hmm. will be opening on September 27th. And if you're interested in learning more about what she has to offer, please visit her website and uh, the, the information will follow afterwards. My name is Alice C. Hagen. You've been watching Think Tech Hawaii this at Spotlight. Stay tuned for David Day's uh, interesting program on entrepreneurship here in, uh, in Asia Pacific. Stay tuned and we'll be back next week.